Fair, firm, compassionate. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Chris Wolf is suing motel owner Margot Nichols in the amount of $345 for auto tow fees and motel charges after he says she wrongfully kicked him out of her establishment and had his vehicle towed. All rise, remain standing and come to order. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Kevin Ross presiding. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All parties have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Deputy Thomas. Chris Wolf, you're suing Margo Nichols for $345. Apparently, you feel as though you're entitled to have monies back from staying at her bed and breakfast as well as having your car towed. Darn right. What happened, sir? Uh, what happened was I went and stayed at her motor lodge, and I, I went and Why did you pick her particular place to stay? Okay, what happened was I was, I was driving a couple states to go and visit my grandfather for his 60th birthday, right? All right, so you all were getting together with him. Mm -hmm. and you decide on your way to see him, you're going to stay at her establishment? That wasn't the plan. We're driving, and it's about several states away. Okay. So on the way down there... You said we. Who else was with you? Uh, my girlfriend and my brother. All right, so the three of you have this road trip going on. Yeah, I guess you can say that. All yeah. right. Uh, so we're driving down there, and I was getting drowsy at the wheel, so I did the responsible thing and pulled over. You all weren't shifting between the other two? Uh, they're not insured, and I don't trust other people to drive the car. Okay, fair enough. So we're driving. I don't know where the next rest stop was. And mm -hmm. so I pulled over and I tried to take, try to get a couple Z's and I had a state trooper knock on my window and told me you can't sleep here. Okay. So I'm driving. I don't know where the next rest stop is. She was the first establishment I see. All right. So no, hold it right there. Tell me about your bed and breakfast. Uh, Your Honor, first of all, it's not a motor lodge. It's a bed and breakfast that I have owned for 25 years. Are you offended by what? I what, am. Bed? I am because it, it, let me just. It denigrates the establishment it, of your bed well, and breakfast. It, huh? it will be pertinent to what I have to say to all right. you as we go along. But my husband, Do tell. my late husband and I started this business about 25 years ago. Okay. And uh, we were looking for a place that would be uh, something where we could interact with people because we both love people, but out in the country, have a nice agrarian feel and uh, be something where we could cook and use our culinary skills we both had so that we could provide breakfast. So when he came to rent the room, yes, you had some other rooms available. I only had the one for him. You only had the one room left. Yes. And he said he wanted it. Yes. All right, and you went to her establishment, her bed and breakfast, and said, okay, I'll take that room. Yeah. So you go there, and how much was the room? $100. All right. $99. Let me, let me see what you have here. Here's, Here's a receipt for the motel room. Okay. And here, this is the receipt for the tow fee. Everything, and that way we can look at it all at one time. There you go. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and is that correct, ma'am? It was, uh, no, it's $99. Yes. Correct. I wasn't going to be that picky, but it was $99. Right. Yes. And then it was an additional $25 per person uh, if, if it was uh, more than one person in the room. And uh, when he came in to check in, if yes. I may go ahead, um, I, one of the things I ask is how many people? Mm -hmm. Because I only see the person in front of me. And he said, with some deliberation and some very nervous thinking, oh, well, well, he one. said, one. And right away, I thought, this right. is suspicious. suspicious. I have had many times in the 25 years people telling me that it was only one when it was more than one for the room. You have a group of eight coming in. Pay, <laughs> exactly. They don't want to pay How many people did you tell us, sir, that, that you were with? Okay. I said one. All right. All right. And well, you already told me. You, so your girlfriend and the brother, they were going to sleep in the car? Well, that wasn't the plan originally. What was the plan? I, I admit, yeah, I, I said one person. But I was drowsy. I was tired, man. I was woken up by the state police. Stop, man. stop, stop. Uh, what does that have to do with how many people are with you? You know your girlfriend's there. You know your brother's there. They're going to get out the car. and At some point, they're either going to sleep in the room or they're going to sleep in the car. Where well, did they honor, end up sleeping? Uh, if I may. Mm -hmm. Hold on a moment. I'm sorry. Where did they end up sleeping? Yeah, they did. Uh, we all, we all end up into the room. So there were three of you. Yeah. So you didn't tell her three. Coming up on America's Court. I see a lit joint in an ashtray. All right. So now I not only smelled the marijuana in the van, I now see it with my own okay, eyes. That was in a rolled up room. cigarette. All right. And later. On. Your Honor, he owes me $1,000. Uh, he promised to repay me and he hasn't. All right. How long has he been owing you the money? He's owed me this money for about a year now. 
This is America's Court with Judge Ross. We're back with the case of Chris Wolf, who is suing Margot Nichols for motel charges and towing fees. As it turns out, you, the girlfriend, and the brother go in the, in the bed and breakfast. Yes? Yeah. Yes. And, but you only end up paying the $99. You end up finding out something different. Yes, like I say, I was suspicious. So I waited to see that it was dark in his room, and I uh, got my uh, flashlight. I went over <laughs> to his van. You became Sherlock Holmes. And huh? I did. I did my own detective work. Um, I thought, well, I'm going to find, get, resolve this once and for all because I was suspicious. And quite frankly, I, w I was hoping I was wrong, okay? Right. So I had the flashlight out, and I wanted to see in his van to see if I could see um, trappings of somebody else being in, in like clothing or something. Right. So while I was there, he must have heard me, and he came out of his room because he was just a, it, the room was relatively few feet from his van, and he came and he was upset and wanted to know what I was doing. He was very indignant, and uh, I said, "Well, I have the right to check your vehicle. This is my." establishment and and the I, vehicle was parked on your property and on your premises. yes the vehicles parked on my property and we went back and forth and finally said oh he said okay and he oh, he unlocked his van and opened the door and then lo and behold in his back seat i see uh girls clothing and uh well the, we, i mean we already know that the girlfriend and the brother were there and is that why it says an additional fifty dollars here so this is a different receipt because you ended up having to pay for two other guests. Yeah, okay, what happened was, all right, I'll admit, yeah, I, I snuck in my girlfriend and my brother. But it was late at night. Wait, expect me to just go and leave them sleeping out in no, the van? No, she expected you to pay the additional $50 from Jump Street. Oh, hey, hey, I admit, I, I tried to pull one over on her, oh. and it was wrong of me. You failed miserably. Yeah. All right, so you were supposed to pay the $149. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't just stop there, though. No, it didn't. So while we were there, and he was confronting me, and then he opened the door, and I, I clearly stated, okay, you've got three people in your room. Um, I also smelled something very suspicious, and this was undoubtedly the smell of marijuana, all right? Oh, okay. So uh, now that's, I, that's assumptions, all right? I, you know, we all okay. know what it smells like, please. I was raised in the 60s. <laughs> oh, okay, I, lady, I, all right. I, I've lived She's like, don't life. try to play I me. I, I have already been please, there and done I've that. Had a lot of experience well, we can all make assumptions, life. man. Well, okay, sir. Was it marijuana? Uh, in my van, no. Okay, so now that's a yes. It was marijuana in But here's the thing. The room. Oh, no, but, oh, no. no, you stop. Was this a non-smoking I have non-smoking signs tastefully placed in every room. They're, they're clear, and they're in my rental office, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, I got it. it's so clear. I understand. So you're upset because $345, $149 was for the room. Where does the other amount come from? Okay. Well, I see a lit joint in an ashtray all right so now i not only smelled the marijuana in the van i now see it with my own okay, eyes that was a rolled room. up cigarette all right it's a non-smoking establishment and she knows what a joint is yeah but it's still yes, it's I not do. a but why, it's not do you, why do you think everyone's stupid i'm not i don't think everybody's stupid okay well good well, then she's not stupid so she would know what a joint is yes i do so the bottom line is you kicked them out the bottom line is, well, there's a little bit to it, and this is how the other charge came in to be. I, di I was trying to kick him out. I said, I want you out of here. And the, uh, the conversation was escalating, and I was feeling a little bit intimidated, and I don't want to... So basically, you said, I want story. you to leave, and you said, I'm not leaving because I yeah, paid for the night. Yes, he... Is that what happened? Well, at this... Is that what happened? I'm talking to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's either I don't want to get kicked out if you're going to take my money. She was more than happy to take the 50 bucks I, I was trying to so pay for. So you had already taken guess. the money. Yes. In, the, in this conversation, he said to me, well, here, here's the $50. And he, gave, he probably threw it at me, but he gave it to me. And I have not a kind of motel you get off a truck stop. I have one where I've, I've cultivated return business. I got it. And Let's talk about the 196, the difference between that price and the, uh, what, you're, what you're asking for, because your car got towed. Yes. Okay. After the conversation escalated, 
she was she went down to the office. I went and tried to go and talk to her. I was trying to see if we could work something out. All right, but she was refusing to go and give me to refund the money, and she was planning on kicking us out. So I was like, you know what, ma'am, go ahead, please call the police. I was wish the police would come down here and clear this thing up. And then as this is going on, you know, I was trying to figure out what to do, and I assumed the cops are on the way. And next, I go look outside, and my van is up and gone. Well, you're on. So he had it towed. Yeah, they I went and towed, towed my van. I told him. Uh, before I had it towed, I said, if you do not leave, I am going to have your van towed. Got it. All right. And you basically said, well, then give me my money back after you've already been at the establishment under two hours. Right? That's what you're telling me. And you want to use the law as a means of making yourself whole, mm -hmm. and yet you didn't have